Human beings are fallible creatures. We all have brain fails and bad days and times of our lives when shit does not go to plan. How best to prevent this and uh, mitigate any unnecessary risk of failure is one of the main themes of Atoll Gawande's The Checklist Manifesto. Let's see what it's all about. How are you all going today, guys? Welcome back to Walk It Off. I'm your host, Nathan, and today we are going to be talking about Atoll Gawande's The Checklist Manifesto. Now, this one is kind of a bit more in the realm of productivity and um, kind of professionalism more so than mental health, but there is a lot of crossovers that, uh, that Adol talks about that I think are directly applicable to your personal and mental health life. So we've all been there. I've had the best laid plans of mice and men all for it to go completely to hell right at the last minute. Now, you might say that why, you know, like duh, the checklist has been around for a long time, but have you ever actually put any thought into how this procedural mechanism came about and how you can actually really apply it to your own life. So if you've never heard of Atoll before, he is an American surgeon that wanted to find out more about any procedural mechanisms that he could put in place to prevent deaths and infections inside of his surgery. And uh, throughout the course of his study, just by introducing things as simple as the right PPE, something I think that in this day and age we can all, uh, all acknowledge. Without the right PPE, hospitals are a stewing pot of germs. Have you ever thought about how they manage that? Well, Atoll does and he goes into some pretty extensive research and um, enlists the help of eight different hospitals from around the world, ranging from what one would say is some of the best facilities in the world, but also some poorer areas. Now, uh, in some of the third world countries, the Atoll goes to and helps out with, um, he was able to reduce hospital deaths or uh, post-surgery infection related deaths by up to 40%. Now that is a pretty staggering number, um, especially when it comes into death reduction. And essentially, he wanted to do a bit of research into the history and where the checklist emerged from. And there's a couple of really interesting sections early on in the book where he talks about, I believe it's just, so kind of in the lead up to World War II, the American army was uh, commissioning a bunch of aerospace companies to build the next big bomber technology. And so this would have been like a precursor to the B-52, essentially. And what ended up happening is they had this brand spanking new wonderful machine out on the tarmac and they had their best test pilot in the cockpit. And he missed a certain switch and the thing just careened off the end of the runway and blew up. And essentially from that point on, the pilot's checklist was born. And it's the admission that this particular piece of machinery is too complicated and there is too many things going on for one person to keep track of. And it's, yeah, it's, okay, finding out what are the steps in here that people always forget, but will lead to something serious happening if it is missed. 
Now, like I said in the intro, if I make a tiny little stuff up and a typo goes to print, it's, well, my boss may think it's the end of the world, it's not really. Someone hasn't died because of it. But like I said, if a pilot or a surgeon misses a step, that can have pretty serious consequences. And as such, Atoll goes on a journey of discovery to find out where his preferred method of getting shit done right actually came from. So one of my favorite parts of this book was pretty early on where, uh, where Atoll talks about how in the 21st century, how in the 21st century, ignorance at a professional level is not really an excuse any of us can actually use anymore because we have near ubiquitous internet and access to the knowledge that we need. So, yeah, ignorance, yeah, it's just not gonna cut it anymore. The only other excuse that we have is ineptitude or experience and knowledge applied incorrectly. Now, ignorance, we can get rid of. Like I said, we have ubiquitous internet, that's not really an excuse anymore. But ineptitude is nothing but a failure to prepare for what needs to happen. And essentially, Atoll is, he's becoming a champion for the usage of the checklist. Like I said, he was able to reduce uh, post-surgery infection rates and therefore deaths by up to 40% in some hospitals. Now that is just an absolutely insane number. But like I said, he goes through and interviews quite a lot of people. Um, primarily there is a lot of people from either the aviation from either the aviation industry or from fellow surgeons. And uh, yeah, I will say first and foremost that this book is not for the faint of heart or anybody who is particularly squeamish. Um, the Straight out of the gate, Atoll starts with what he dubs war stories between him and another surgeon. And they are gruesome, they are very graphic, and done with only the kind of detail that a surgeon could muster. And yeah, like I said, if there is anybody who wants the information, you might be uh, better suited to look up just some notes based on the book because yeah, there is some extremely, <laughs> extremely graphic sections in this. Um, there is more than one point where he talks about having someone on the operating table and having to open them right up and grasp someone's heart literally in his hands and squeeze it to get it. And um, I generally have a fairly strong constitution, but there was a few times when, <laughs> when I went a bit pale reading it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is an extremely, extremely good book. And um, yeah, I am definitely going to be taking some of this on board for my own life. So it's more so in your professional life where you will encounter these, but it is also extremely good to have some kind of mental checklists in place when thinking about your mental health. And skipping steps as I, like, I can personally attest to the fact that I was very much <laughs> in a hurry to fix my mental health, but unfortunately, it's a slow process and the process must be, like, you know what I mean? You can't rush fixing yourself, unfortunately. That's not the way the mind works. You can apply this to your own mental health and, yeah, I mean, a good checklist for this would go something 
like this. Number one, is the situation that's causing your mental health still happening? If it is, you need to remove yourself from it. Number two, are you seriously taking care of yourself? Okay, that's a real big one, both physically and mentally. You need to remove the things out of your life that are causing the problems, but you also need to take care of your own health. Your physical health and your mental health are intrinsically linked because the mind is a product of the body. Number three on the mental health checklist. Have you spoken to someone about this yet? Um, make sure it's somebody that you have absolute confidence in as either a friend or a medical professional. Um, I would first and foremost recommend talking to your GP about it and then from there try and organise some kind of specialist professional help. And those four things, uh, unfortunately, yeah, go and see a actual, get, number four is organise with your GP to actually go see a mental health specialist. And just keep repeating those four steps for as long as you need to, as long as you are getting, you're making progress with it. I think that, like I have been, more or less running through though that particular process for about I don't know three three maybe five years now I think the biggest part of it is we're very prone to telling us telling ourselves what we think we want to hear as opposed to what we need to hear and that's why you need the professional help so guys, have you read The Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande? I think it is an extremely good read. Um, it might not be your cup of tea if you're looking for something that is more strictly mental health, but it is an extremely good read for anybody who's just trying to organize either their professional or their personal lives a bit better. And, uh, yeah, I think we could all use some more checklists in our lives, quite frankly. <sighs> so guys, it's time to wrap this one up. Have you read The Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande? If you have, I'd love to hear what you thought about it in the comments below. And yeah, tell me all about how you've used checklists to either increase your productivity at work or maybe even you used a checklist to survive something yourself. Either way, let's chat about it in the comments below. If you haven't read this one, definitely check it out. It's a great read. Uh, I think I might hook up, you know, I think I might be picking up some of Atoll's other works in the near future because he has an extremely good and even though it can get graphic sometimes, he has a very vibrant way of writing and he gets straight to the point and there's no kind of fluff in here that doesn't need to be in here. But uh, yeah, until next time, I'm Nathan. This is Walk It Off. Go outside, get better, and be awesome, you amazing, beautiful humans. I'll catch you next time.